Well, welcome, YouTube. See, I was a little quieter that time. I feel like it really, it never is the same. It's never static. Uh, obviously, Beacon Pines, here we go. Finale. If you guys haven't seen the other three parts, I don't know what you're doing. Um, we're playing. We're doing the finale. We're going to figure out exactly what's going on. We know Grandma is actually Mom, and the big freeze happens when you blow up the, the thing, and Mom was trying to do that because uh, Sol Solomon is actually sharper and is like messing with time travel Chapter and immortality six. what was the last thing we did oh yeah the last thing we did is we found out that beck's mom is gonna be murdered if we don't go and save her uh so we're gonna go do the that heist they spent the night's end huddled around that small map formulating a plan to infiltrate the headquarters of perennial harvest it would be no small feat a modern facility equipped with all manner of technology not to mention the swarm of clipboards that would most certainly be scattered throughout. By the time the sun began to peek through the car window used as a makeshift balcony door, all were in agreement. This could just work. The final day before the festival would be used to prepare. They'd need to pull every resource at their disposal, pull every favor with a thread. Even enlist some unsavory characters around town with important tasks only they were suited for. Are we... F we're not friends with the bully. We're not friends with Iggy. I G G Y, uh, right now. So, I assume that's gonna be one of the unsavory characters. Luckily, there was enough ill will and mistrust toward Perennial Harvest that alliances could be found at a bargain. Hell yeah. Luca, Beck, and Rollo rubbed their eyes as they exited the treehouse. They hadn't slept at all that night. There was no time. Beatrix is doing a lot of the heavy lifting for us right now. <laughs> I haven't had to commentate at all. The festival was to begin in one day, and they each had their assignments. Oh, let's go. Let's pull off a heist, baby. All right, quick recap. Rolo, you're going to talk to Roxy uh, cordially. Without her and Fitz, this whole thing could go to bust. <laughs> Me? Cordial? Cordial is my middle name. Uh. And how, <laughs> he just went. Uh. <laughs> and how do you plan to explain he your new? vaguely at Rollo's sizable figure. Circumstance. Bah, she'll be so happy I'm alive. She won't even notice. Beck snorted an involuntary giggle. And Beck, you're sure Alona won't just shoot this whole thing down when she hears it? She'll listen. Once she understands the danger Nelly's in, the danger we're all in. The plan will make sense. Okay. That leaves me with Jeff, then Iggy. How are you going to persuade them? I'll think of something. They each looked at each other with sleepy confidence and nodded. Jeff and Iggy have some good voices, so I'm excited. Mm -hmm. It's going to be fun. Whoop! Well, Godspeed. All right, let's go talk to Jeff. And let's go talk to Iggy and Tish. All right, here we go. I'm excited. I think we're like we're real close to the end. This is gonna be fun. <gasps> Bart! Bart! Ah! I wanna talk to Bart. Bart is so much fun to talk to. Come on. I'm upset. Where does Jeff live? <laughs> I don't know where he stays uh, most of the time. That's not him. Jeff is a little fucking little guy. Like he he looks a little bit like goofy and he sounds goofy as hell. There he is. Hey, Jeff. Ah, ah, what can I do for you? Well, I know how much you hate perennial harvest. Ah, ah, hate's a strong word. Oh, sorry. Ah, I mean, I didn't say it was the wrong word. Gotcha. So we're going to break into their headquarters, and I thought you might be able to help. Jeff wheezed out a long snicker. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I knew you kids were all right. Great, so you'll help? The joy in Jeff's face drained instantly. Uh, not a chance. But give me one good reason I should risk my hide of aiding and abetting you rascals. Looking into the sullen eyes of his would-be accomplice, Luca blurted out the first word that came to mind. The first word the first word that what to mind? <laughs> Sorry. Oh wow. Oh wow. Oh wow. Shit. Shit! Yeah, that's all shit. I still ain't open. Ain't that some shit? <laughs> okay. 
Is this one of those uh, funky little points? Or do I just have to keep using words on him? Okay, I wanted to just use one that I knew wouldn't work. Oh, I forgot we used, looked at him with malice. Uh, yeah, so this is the wrong path for sure. Because he, he has shame. We know he has shame. Um, Alright. I thought Luka this would be a turning point. Ready to give up so, easily. so I was gonna fuck around, but you know. He shouted out again. Fight! Fight! I've done enough fighting for one lifetime and more than my share of losing. Time's come to hang up the gloves. Okay, well. Crooked. Crooked! Yeah, they're all crooks. Like cockroaches. Stamp one out and another comes scurrying along to take its place. Yo, you're pissing me off. Junk! Uh. Yeah, what? Oh, fuck, wait, wrong voice. Yeah, whatever. Sonny, I got more junk than a king ass copper. Ain't interested. Alright. Is it really gonna be the last word or, or none of these gonna work? Hide! Jeff's brow perked up. Fuck off. There's no way there's five options and I picked the last. I picked all of the wrong ones before I got to the last one. What'd you say? Go ahead and hide them. Sensing some traction, Luca carried on with vigor. Let a bunch of kids do what needs to be done. We're not afraid. Jeff's scowl faded with a sigh. Say so what you will about old Jeff, and they all do. But you'll never hear him say I hid from nothing. One good stomp of the foot was all Jeff needed to drive his point home. What was it you kids needed? Some sort of disguise? I've got just a thing. And while we're at it, that crate could come in handy. This ain't gonna be free, you know. I'm thinking five bags of sour gob should cover it. Put it on my tab. Luca offered out his open hand to seal the deal. With a firm and dusty grip, Jeff reciprocated. Let's go, baby. Love the Mets. Done. Swing by first thing in the morning. All right, perfect. Next up. Uh. Wait, <laughs> hang on. Who is next up? <laughs> I, I just started walking and I forgot that I had to actually know. Next up is uh, Iggy, right? I G G Y. Where's I G G Y? I've, I have a feeling he's gonna be in the fucking woods. There he is. Called it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, Dish, look who it is. Yeah, 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 Luca, are you gonna try to tickle us to death again? Look, just hear me out. He raised an eyebrow suspiciously. We're listening. Iggy, I know we've both been giant bags of shit to each other. Iggy gave a reluctant shrug. You're not wrong. Well, lately, life has been kind of strange, you know? Iggy considered the point. What's up, Crow? Welcome. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Things have been weird around here. So I'm offering a truce and asking for your help. What do you say we break our hostilities, at least for now? We do like breaking things, even if a truce means less breaking things. What if I told you there was a way to have a truth, truce and break stuff? Go on. Um, we're, we're starting the heist. We just enlisted the help of Jeff. Now we're enlisting the help of Tish and Fuckboy. Um, and we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna, uh... Uh, you know, break out. Uh, what's what's her name? Beck's mom. Beck's mom is stuck in the is stuck in the building, and she's not allowed out until the harvest. And she'll probably get murdered after, you know, after the harvest is over. So, I need you to cause a distraction so I can sneak into perennial harvest HQ. A wild-eyed grin spread across Iggy's face. Yeah, 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 yeah. My my, Luca Van Horn, I'm impressed. And after this is all done, maybe you and Tish can come and hang out at the treehouse sometime. Iggy glanced over to Tish, who nodded in agreement. Aww. Fine. But not because we want to see your crappy treehouse. We just like to cause chaos. With a quick nod, Luca was off. We're friends! Let's go! This is not the good ending. I have, a, I have, I have doubts that it's the good ending. Uh, and I just said earlier, it's because we looked at Nun Creed with malice instead of shame. Uh, or like we saw malice in him instead of shame and we know from other endings that he is full of shame right now because of everything that happened like he doesn't want to do what he's doing so you know did you hear that tish he gazed up at tish with a smile he invited us to hang out at the treehouse a single tear ran down tish's cheek oh 
I never expected this day to come. How wonderful. You can talk? Since when? Chapter 7. <laughs> Into the Hive. A good heist requires preparation. It threw me off so much she could talk that I didn't know what to give her voice. All I would say is, yep. Like, I, I mean, all I, it was so easy. Now I have to say words with her. And thorough preparation takes time. Something they had precious little of. So far, everything was in order. You know what? You are an artist. Thank you. It's because of the raid. Um, you know what? I have a feeling we're going to run into Nuncreed in the building. And because we looked at him with Malice earlier, that's going to be what breaks us during the heist. But if we look at him with shame, we'll be good. You didn't put the one with the raid word on it. I looked at it and it looked kind of like it looked not uh, amazing in dark mode. Um, so I was just like, you know what? Honestly, this works. I like it. I don't mind it. Uh, just like this. Jeff, Iggy, and Tish all agreed to do their part. I also don't like using words too much and unless there's like a reason, like the what a save emote that I'm working on, working on, I haven't worked on it in ages, but whenever I do that, that one's going to have words because obviously what a save needs to be the words, but if they don't need words, they can just be an image. I feel that also works. Beck radioed Luca that night with a simple and covert message. We are locked and loaded on my end. And Rolo, after a lengthy confession, managed to persuade Roxy and Fitz to help. He stowed away in mission control for the night to avoid attracting attention. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a joker, baby. Not I'm a joker, baby. I'm not the... I'm, I'm baby joker. <laughs> Rolo, being uniquely suited for the role, would be the first to breach perennial harvest. The outfit provided by Jeff wasn't perfect, but a convincing disguise is 10% wardrobe, 90% confidence. Yeah, baby. What you call Wolo? Rolo took a few vigorous breaths and shook out his <gasps> arms. Oh, just stay calm, Rolo. You can do this. It's just a fucking mustache. Got your delivery here. A delivery? I don't have anything in my notes about delivery. One moment. Joker emote would be cool. <laughs> I'm the Joker. I'm so sorry, but there's no delivery scheduled for this morning. Right. He had to think quick. That's because this goes directly to the founder. He asked to be kept secret. Rolo sighed, adjusting his tool belt. You know how the founder can be. I, I suppose we can leave this one off the records. Our harvest awaits and such. With a stroke of his mustache, Rolo proceeded into the perennial harvest headquarters. Our harvest awaits. Package here for the founder. No, I didn't hear anything about. Yeah, this is a need to know kind of thing. Um, I'll just check. He stammered and flipped through the pages of his clipboard. This goes directly to the founder. I don't have time to fill you in. Oh, I see. If you just complete this form- Rolo interrupted with urgency in his voice. Every time with the forms! Look, if you want to explain to the founder why I'm late, it's your funeral. Uh, I'm sorry, what did you say your name was again? I'm- Rolo panicked. Our harvest awaits! Sir? That's a restricted area. Excuse me, sir! Our harvest- yeah. Listen, you only need one sentence to make it through, really. Ready to light this candle, Tish? Yup. Oh, she's back on the- she's back on the one-word basis. Okay. Suck on this, perennial ham fist. Dude, always with the fireworks, man. What was that? The distraction was enough for Rolo to regain his confidence. Just open the damn door. I've got a job the to do. The fumbled around in a frenzy. I... I should check on that noise. Oh, come on. Just buzz me in already. Okay, okay. <laughs> that was... From the Muffin Gang. Anyway. Phew. That was close. Oh my <laughs> god. I was in there? Our harvest of weights? Hey, I figure, when in doubt, stick with the classics. Well, that was a close one. But you pulled it off. Nice work, Rolo. Alright, everyone knows what to do. 
Yep, deep engineer needs to the north. I'll go with Beck, in case you need some muscle. I'll head east to the founder's office. You two be safe. Alright, well, I'm gonna assume it's this way. That's odd. That's, there's not even any cups for the water. Didn't I have a fucking map? This whole place just feels fake. But of all things, a fake plant? Did I fucking find it? S Solomon? Solomon stopped in his tracks. I found it! Damn easy! They were- <laughs> wow, okay. L Luca? What are you doing here? It's a long story. Are you okay? A veneer of confusion flashed across Solomon's face. Yeah, we know why. Because he's the fucking founder. His words rushed out dramatically. No, I am most certainly not okay. Someone, some strange people grabbed me and... Were they in hazmat suits? Yes, how did you know? They brought me here and locked me up. And when they were distracted, I ran. Damn, okay, you should stick with me. We've got a plan. Solomon's facade briefly faltered. We? Yeah, Rolo and Beck are headed to deep engineering. Thank heavens you found me. We've got to get out of here. We can't just leave. But they'll catch us again. I've got to do something first. When you were running, did you happen to see a door marked Founder? Founder? Why are you looking for him? I'm not. I just need to get into that office. Now that you mention it, I do think I saw a door that said Founder. It was just down this Luca way. Luca happened to notice a plaque above the door. The office of the Founder. Knocking comes with consequence. Oh, here it is. So it is. It's pretty lucky that I ran into you or else I might have missed it. Truly fortunate. Luca tried the handle. Locked. Solomon leaned forward to examine the mechanism. Regrettably, it seems to be some sort of electric lock. I don't see how you, how we, could possibly defeat a lock Luca like that. smiled and looked at his watch. Well, let's just wait a minute. Oh, let's go, baby. Love the match, baby. Let's go. I don't know why I say love the match when I'm excited. I don't even fucking... I don't watch sports. <laughs> I don't know what funny business you're up to, but I like she it. She mimed a quick hat tip and ambled off with a whistle. I love her so much. What a legend. Howdy. Good afternoon. The light on the keypad changed from red to green. How did you do that? It was good to have friends. Quick, let's get inside before someone spots us. <sighs> Luca switched on his walkie-talkie. Look at that, it's actually furnished, unlike every corridor in this fucking building. Rolo, I'm in. As expected, there's a control panel. Great timing. We're stuck at a locked door marked 24601. Need you to get us through. Yo, this is really lethal company core. That's all I'm saying. E4. What if someone catches us? We should get out of here. Now, I'm not leaving my friend, Solomon. On the computer screen, a green cursor blinked in a password field. Hey, guys. So remember how every single time it goes through my browser and every single time I get scared, it happened again. Fucking happened again. Thanks for the hydrate, though. <laughs> I gotta switch that. I'm gonna switch that to a different channel. I did not roll. Let me roll. So sorry. There you go. Enjoy your points stuff. Let's see what you got for uh, rewards this time. Do a barrel roll. That's fun. That's funky. Suggest, suggest a game. All right. ASMR. Fuck. Okay. Extend the stream. I hope you guys don't extend the stream. <laughs> I gotta end at midnight. I have stuff to do. Um, I might have to remove that just for February because I already stream enough, you know? I stream enough. Um, anyway. Oh, God. ASMR for two minutes. All right. We're going to have to do these voices with ASMR, which is going to be difficult. And let's start. Surely you don't have a way to get around the password. Luca pecked out his best guess. Underground secrets. Again. The, same. the screen blinked to life. Columns of green numbers glowed on a black background. The same fucking password twice. Solomon, don't do that. If you're gonna run an extremely 
illegal operation. Don't use the same password for two different control panels. What are you doing? How, how did you just guess that? Oh, it's this absurd password roller when he was down here before. It's funny how someone arrogant enough to call themselves the founder used such a basic password. Or they were thinking several moves ahead, not expecting anyone to guess something so simple. These villain types always end up outsporting themselves. Solomon's jaw clenched into a half smile. Your powers of deduction are as impressive as your luck. Luca quickly scanned the columns for number 24601. Rolo, I think this should do it. Bingo, bango, doors open. Luca, you never fail to impress. What is that slippery loud even doing down here? We have a friend whose mom is in trouble. We're here to get her out. I see. Once again, Luca scrutinized the numbers on the screen. In that moment of distraction, Solomon reached forward and pressed a large red button. Maybe this one opens the lock. Hey, ASMR is over. Hey, fuck you. Idiot. You dumb bitch. All right. Anyway. Crap. Oh, sorry. I don't have to wish by anymore. Crap. We've got company. Luca, must go faster. One sec, I can't think with all this noise. He quickly skimmed the screen with his finger. Here it is, 13806, go, go, go. Kirstie's fumbling, Kirstie's fumbling hands. My apologies, Luca. Don't beat yourself up. I know you were just trying to help. Let me make some notes. I'll turn down the reroll and I will also make the f f audio go through a different channel so I don't get scared every time. Um, lower cost of reroll and make, uh, what is it? Like alerts go through different audio channel. Perfect. Okay. Oh man, no water cups. <laughs> roll, uh, bottle water, roll low. <laughs> Rollo! Rollo, are you okay? Rollo, come in! Mr. Kerr approached oh, let's with go, a baby. sneer and let's spoke go. into his walkie-talkie. You can turn off the alarms! They're trapped! With self-satisfaction, he called into the hallway. <laughs> that, my dears, is a dead end! Nowhere to run! Rollo, where are you? Are you okay? Yeah, I think we lost him. Making our way back to Nelly's office. <laughs> okay, you two rabble rousers are coming with us? <laughs> nope. Make a break for it. <laughs> I love Roxy. Did that little shit just kick me? Don't just stand there after them. Damn, get fucked. Okay, I think that worked. Roxy and Fitz have them on a wild goose chase. I'm having trouble following what just happened. Like I said, it's good to have friends. Rolla, how long do you think Roxy can distract them? How long can Roxy keep someone so pissed off they can't see straight? Let's just say we've got time. Entering Nelly's office now. Mom! Wait, <laughs> wrong voice. Bolo, uh, Mom! Oh, honey, what did you do to your hair? I thought you'd be happy. I finally used the Young Chemist Lab Kit. You sure have a knack for making me incredibly proud in the most frustrating ways. We need to get you out of here. We? Who is your adult friend? Oh, I'm not an adult adult. Ever heard of a growth spurt? I had more of a growth spew. No, that's not possible. Now he leaned over to examine his teeth. Substantial banding on the enamel of the molar is consistent with Tempest Liquamine exposure. Is that what you call the gunk they forced me to drink? You drank it? Oh! Oh no. They told me it was only being tested on plants. Oh, Beck, sweetie, I promise I didn't know. Mom, what the hell's going on at the place? At this place? I was brought here to work on the discovery of a lifetime. 
A novel chemical compound was discovered under Beacon Pines in a wellspring they called the Source. They named it Tempest Liquamine. It pulls energy from its surroundings in order to fundamentally alter matter's relationship to time. It was a secret to Valentine's fertilizer. They harvested the source, infusing small amounts of Tempest Liquamine into the product. Pro well, I don't know. It worked wonders, drastically accelerating growth, plant growth. Crops would be ready to harvest in a fraction of the time, but it led to complications. Mm -hmm. The foul harvest. Perennial harvest came in to clean up the mess, to succeed where Valentine failed. failed. But Tempest Liquamine is rebellious. Mm -hmm. Rebellious? You can think of it as a manifestation of change itself. It's volatile, but it's very nature. So the more you try to force it to do a specific thing, the more it resists, yes. I can relate to that. My role was to finish the work of my predecessor, Dr. Prescott, harnessing Tempest Liquamine to reliably manipulate an orga organism's age. An orgasm's age, shit, <laughs> sorry. Just imagine how many people we could feed. Mr. Crow was very insistent that we achieve a successful result before today's festival. But you didn't, right? Really sighed. You know how much I love a good puzzle. I poured myself into the problem. It wasn't long until I discovered oddities in Dr. Prescott's notes. O oddities? They contained obvious errors, mistakes that someone of his reputation would never make. So I fixed them, and... And now I get to replace my entire wardrobe. I really am truly sorry. Man, those clothes were all hand-me-downs anyway. It's, it sounds like Dr. Prescott figured it out, got, got cold feet, and intentionally sabotaged his own work. I, I had considered the possibility. I've sent a letter asking him to clarify his thinking. Mom, Dr. Prescott is dead. Claire had him killed. What? I overheard them talking about it on the radio. It's why we gotta get you out of here. You know, it's just... Like, now. Wait, the vial! I finally solved the chemical equation, allowing direct control of aging. Mr. Kerr picked it up just before you came. All the more reason we gotta hightail it. Luca, we've got Dr. Modwell. Heading your way now. You know how Becca's rebellious? I'm just thinking, what if she just created a British accent just so that she could be more rebellious, you know? I think that's a very funny thing, and I'm going to put that in the lore. Roger that. Be careful. All right, everything's on track. And what is your plan for escape? We'll go over everything when they get here. In the meantime, maybe we can dig up some more info? It looks like the founder was helping Kerr plan the festival. Why would such a secretive leader be obsessed with a party? Only time will tell. Luca held his hand up to the ashtray. Still warm. He must have been here recently. Yeah, like right now. I also like the idea of this child smoking. That's so funny. Malice 80 proof whiskey. A hard drink for a hard man. A hard drink for a what now? Wow, even his alcohol is arrogant. Solomon muttered inaudibly. I should just smother you right now. What's that? I said I shouldn't bother you right now. Don't be silly. You're no bother at all. Let's see what else this bad boy has on it. Security system. Time card logs. Payroll. You know, for being so evil, this guy sure is boring. Solomon once again muttered under his breath. Just you wait. Huh? Oh, nothing. Luca tugged on each of the cabinets. Dang, this must be the good stuff. They're all locked. Perhaps he's not as careless as you suspected. Okay, okay, okay. I'm really sorry you got dragged into this mess, Solomon. You needn't worry about me. Well, I feel bad either way. What's up, honey? How are you doing? Welcome. We're gonna get you out of this, I promise. With a subtle, quivering lip, a smile crawled across Solomon's face. They heard the trampling of frantic footsteps from the hallway. Lock it, lock it, lock it! Locked. There's too many characters here and I gotta remember all their voices. This is gonna be so difficult. That was close. When we left Nelly's office, it was swarming with clipboards. We barely got away. Did they follow you? Rolo. Before we start tossing blame around, it is 
Is it possible someone ordered a pizza? We'd love to hear your thoughts. Definitely not a pizza. What now? Don't look at me. I'm officially retiring from the heisting business. We're so sorry for the inconvenience. We just have a few quick questions. You just let me think. Can someone watch the door? Of course. Fucking Solomon. Everyone else huddle up. Oops. Son of a bitch. I think this little caper has gone on long enough. Solomon, no! Hush now, child. The adults are speaking. Dr. Modeville, a brief reintroduction is in order. We've never met in person, but we have corresponded. You see, it was I who hired you. Solomon, the pathetic orphan child, the powerful and enigmatic founder, Sharper, the fallen progenitor who created this town. <gasps> Perennial harvest, Valentine fertilizer, all connected by a single thread. Yours truly. But that's- Her eyes searched the floor in thought. Solomon watched eagerly, waiting for the flicker of epiphany. With a sickened look, she peered into his soul. <laughs> yes, now you've got it. Tempus Liquamine, you discovered how to reverse the process. Solomon clapped with genuine delight. Very good, Dr. Modeville. Very good. Though the discovery wasn't intentional. Solomon glanced down, examining his youthful form. And the effects went a little too far for my tastes. That's why you need me to finish Dr. Prescott's work. Which you did admirably. Mr. Kerr, the vial, please. Kerr presented it with a theatrical twirl of the hand. May I present to you the eighth wonder Before of the- Before he could finish, Rollo snatched the vial from Kerr's palm. Wow, this stuff sounds pretty valuable. Be careful, you fool! You've no idea what you have in your hand. Actually, we do. You just did a whole evil vi villain monologue thingy about Rolo it. Rollo casually tossed the vial to Luca. Gosh, maybe I'll have a taste. He tickled the vial mockingly. Seize him! Luca, over here! Uh, uh, fuck, what's the. <laughs> Luca, over here! <laughs> Move another inch and I'll smash it! She held it tightly behind her back. Solomon sighed, speaking in crisp, measured syllables. <sighs> you have no plan. I'll smash it, I swear! Fine. Risk killing us all, then. Or, if you're lucky, nothing happens. Then what? We capture you and grant you much less leniency. He pursed his lips with feigned sincerity. But I give you my word. If you hand it over now, none of you will be harmed. A deep uncertainty washed over Beck. You're a smart girl, Beck. But there's no shame in being outwitted by someone smarter than you. We both know there's only one way this ends. She looked to Nellie shakily. With a dispirited nod, Nellie sighed in defeat. Beck slowly approached Solomon. That's a good girl. Beck, don't do it! We can't trust that jerk! I'm sorry. He's right. With apprehension, Beck conceded. Solomon pocketed the vial and brushed off his shoulder with a sharp flick. Mr. Kerr, you have allowed your <laughs> Mr. Kerr, you have allowed yourself to be humiliated by a group of children. Report to my office tomorrow for a performance review. The blood drained from Kerr's face. Oh, of course, sir. But first, you have a speech to make. Trot out there and give me the introduction I deserve. And don't forget to smile! <laughs> yes, sir! And to think, all of this is thanks to the efforts of Mr. Van Horn. I don't understand. How is this all because of me? Ha! I said Mr. Van Horn, silly child. Dr. Walt 
Van Horn. Your father was always a thorn in my side. I offered him an opportunity to be a part of something great, but the fool was blinded by righteousness. He even broke into my laboratory in an attempt to sabotage my work. Solomon shook his head with gratification. But the universe has a funny way of correcting course. By meddling with a force he didn't understand, Walt showed me its true potential. As fate would have it, Luca, your father's dying act was to grant me eternal life. A muffled applause resonated faintly through the walls. Where, where are Roxy and them, guys? Well, that's my cue. After the festivities, well, after the festivities and my subsequent ascension, I'll return to deal with you all. Until then, I suggest you use this time to reflect on the magnitude of your failure. You three, keep post outside the door. Damn. Well, crap. I can't believe Beck sold us out like that. I'm not sure she had any other choice. So what now? What's the plan? I don't have one. Of course you do. You always have a plan. Rolo, you just need some time. Rolo, it's over. We lost. Nelly was staring at the floor, deep in thought. Sorry, Luca. Give me a minute to catch my mind. Calm my mind. Come on. We gotta do something. Hey. I'm sorry, Luca. I did what I had to do. I know. It's just... We were so close. I've got a feeling that eventually Solomon will get what's coming to him. Time wounds all heals. Well, time seems like less of an issue for him now. Wait, time wounds all heals is such a good phrase, actually. <laughs> That's good. I like that. Luca, there's something you should know. After Mr. Kerr locked me in that office, I had nothing but time and curiosity. I poked around a bit, hoping to find a means of escape, but I found something else. A note hidden in a false drawer. What sort of note? Dr. Prescott must have sensed his time at perennial harvest was going short. So he left behind a letter, with the hope it would be found by, by his successor. It was a confession of sorts. He left it for me, but its contents... Luca, I think they were meant for you. Why? What did it say? It was about an incident with your mother. Dr. Prescott found her in, her, in his lab with a stolen keycard. There was an accident. She had been exposed to extreme amounts of Tempest Liquamine. The color dropped from Luca's face. Did she... Is she... She survived. Dr. Prescott decided to help her recover. He no longer trusted Perennial Harvest, so he kept her whereabouts a secret. Over time, your mother led him to reconsider the purpose of scientific discovery. Sci yeah, that's why she's grand. Science is, science is often at the vanguard of change, but that doesn't mean it's always right. He realized that no one should have control over something as powerful as time itself. I now believe that's why he began to intentionally sabotage his work. And it cost him his life. That's a reasonable conclusion. Luca was overwhelmed with emotion. But if she's alive, where has she been? Where is she now? A sudden explosion sounded from the hull. Oh my god, let's go, baby. Chapter 8. Come up in. We're not dead yet. Ears still We're not ringing. dead somehow. Gran picked herself up off the ground. Through the dust and smoke, she looked over to see Mrs. Fratelli helping Hiram Tolliver to his feet. She'd had to beg, borrow, and steal to acquire those explosives. Wait, what? Mrs. Fratelli, I think, is Diner Woman, and Hiram Tolliver is uh, our favorite little lisp boy. How many nights had she spent visualizing how she'd use them to make things right? And now, her one shot at destroying the source, that damned hole that swallowed so much of her life, was gone. Traded for this jagged hole in a wall and a foolhardy shot at rescuing Rollo. Oh! So, oh, because, because we went- Oh my god! Okay, so the choices we made, we didn't have to make her- So, okay, the reason we've died multiple times in the past is because of- her exploding the hole and creating the big freeze. But hey, what's up, dragon? Sorry, I didn't even realize because you're <laughs> the same green as Lily. But okay, so th the reason that she's not going to create the big freeze this time is because she thinks Rolo is in here, which he is, but she thinks only he's in here. And so she's trying to save him. 
That's good. I like that. With Fratelli and Tolliver at her side, she stepped through. It was a strange feeling. The last time she'd stalked this maze of hallways, it was in a different body. They quickly rounded a corner to find a group of clipboards guarding a door. Something worth guarding is probably something worth seeing. She leapt forward, brandishing her cane. If her last Let's chance go. at what vengeance for things lost was truly gone, she would just have to fight to keep what she still had. God, I love Gran. Slash mom. Let's go, baby! Let's go! Gran, what are you doing here? Luca, what are you doing here? What, sorry, what are you doing here? We're here to save Nelly. We're here to save Rolo. Hey, Mrs. Luca's Gran. Wait, what? Hey, Mrs. Luca's Gran. That's awful nice of you, but I'm fine. Oh, no. What did they... Gran, there's no time to explain. We have to go now. Come on, everyone. We've got a party to crash. They made their way out from deep within perennial harvest, just as Solomon finished up his speech. So this is where it would help to have shame instead of malice, probably, because... Yeah, because now, now that we're here with everyone, none creed is probably going to go against us, and that's going to be what causes our downfall. And... Sorry. I can't tell if people are leaving or not. I thought that, like... Oh, it's only not... It's not even 10 yet. Okay, there's no way they're leaving. I thought I heard them leaving, and I was like, what's happening? But no, they're not going to leave before, like, midnight. Anyway... <laughs> Thankfully, we can dispense with the formalities from here on Solomon out. Solomon pulled a glass vial from his pocket. We've got to stop him! In one smooth motion, he downed its contents. A triumphant smile grew across Solomon's lips. No! Well, I guess that's it. We lost. Well, I wouldn't be so sure about that. Why would we have lost there? I don't get it. With a mischievous look, just because he drank it? Luca. Remember when I had the vial behind my back? I might have tweaked his wonder potion with a little... With a little junk? I might have tweaked his wonder potion with a little junk. Can't wait to see the look on his face when he realizes he drank his own cigarette ash. How did ashes get into the vial? It's pretty easy to mess with the vial when it's behind my back. Oh, that's sneaky. Well, it's a bad habit anyways. Paul always says, bad habits are like 50-yard field goals. Huh? Hard to kick. <laughs> Why did everyone go silent? That's so funny. You can all call me Sharper Valentine. We've already done this reveal before. began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. We already knew this. It's all right. Imagine we killed him. <clears throat> what did we do to him? Oh my god, he got Thanos! <laughs> <laughs> no fucking way! No way! <laughs> oh my god! Mr. Stark, I don't feel so good! <laughs> Chat is freaking out. <laughs> what just happened? That's so funny. Well, that's one way to kick a bad habit. So we committed murder is what we did. of what was once Sharper Valentine wafted into the air, the crowd began to disperse, still numb from what they had just observed. We just murdered someone. Sharper Valentine someone. was gone for good. His end would be a new beginning for Beacon Pines. A new chance to let go of the things they had lost and grab hold of a new future. The end. Well, <laughs> I'd be lying if I said that wasn't a bit gratifying. Yeah, but it's definitely if that not the ending. To you, like a good note to end on, I won't stand in your way. Definitely not the best ending. Cause it was too, it was too easy, bro. It's too easy. All right, I want to see the other, other things we can do with him. With a little malice. Let's do a little malice. I might have tweaked his wonder potion with a little malice. That's so funny. <laughs> That's so funny. Malice? The whiskey from his office? I knew it would come back. Yep, dude had an unfinished glass on his desk. 
Figures Grow Juice could use a little air of the dog. You can all call me Bling Blong Bling Blong. His body and face began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a. We know, we know. All right, what's gonna happen to him this time? Is he gonna turn into a bottle of alcohol? That'd be really funny. Is he gonna turn into an alcoholic? <laughs> that's so funny. Now that's what I call any poof whiskey. Damn, dude. <laughs> The crowd gazed in stunned silence at the now empty stage. The quiet was broken when William Kerr sprinted off stage and into the distance. He was never seen around Beacon Pines or anywhere else for that matter again. Watching the silhouette of Kerr disappear over the horizon, Luca began to laugh. I gotta do two minutes of ASMR, shit. <laughs> All right, I'll do it in a sec. First, a low chuckle that became uncontrolled heaving laughter. Through his tears, he was vaguely aware that Welcome the crowd Jess. had begun to laugh with him. The end. That's awesome. That was unexpected. Perhaps a bit of an absurd ending for my taste, but who am I to say? I'm only writing the damn thing. All right, let's do change and I'll, I'll start the timer as well. All right. It started. Change. I might have tweaked his wonder potion with a little change like pocket change you're a lucky penny yeah i popped it in the file when no one was looking what's that gonna do no idea that's the beauty of science now we observe you can all call me not sucker five thousand. his body and face all right we know let's see what happens What the fuck? Mm -hmm. Holy crap, he's a baby. Yeah, but he's still sharper, right? Uh -huh. What he was no longer matters. <laughs> this is an innocent child. Uh -huh. I apologize for all the harm my uh -huh. father has caused. Eris awkwardly cradled the squirming child. She looked to her brother, her voice shaking with uncertainty. Uh -huh. uh Augustus, what do we... We do what Valentines always do. What must be done. I'll hurry home and prepare a crib for Father... Er... Young Sharper. That would be a great help, thank you. She looked back down at the infant with equal parts kindness and terror in her eyes. With a shake of her head, Eris addressed the crowd with a stern scowl. Why is Baby Sharper so cute, though? Like, come on. Like, look at the little guy. He's so small. Okay, everyone, the show is over. You may leave now. Epilogue. Beacon Pine's coldest summer on record came He's and went without much baby. fanfare. Just a baby. Folks shared what they had and none were left wanting. The new school year was ushered in by the falling leaves of autumn. After everything Luca, Rollo, and Beck had been through, middle school was bearable. I'm back, allowed to talk, let's go. I don't have to be a little ASMR. -y. The chill of winter didn't seem to bother people much. They kindled a hope for a better future in their hearts. When spring arrived, farmers planted their crops with a sense of joy and optimism. And as the dawn of the first day of summer came again, its light slowly spread. As the, the dawn of the valley. first day of summer did what again? It crept over the town square, across the river, past the neglected welcome sign and came to rest what? on a young boy sleeping what? at dawn. <laughs> That's so funny. Holy shit. <laughs> His mind at peace knowing he is here for a reason. Holy fuck. <laughs> Oh man, that's so fucking funny. No okay. cut. Um, I feel like this isn't the ending though. Like, is it for real? Rollo, are you up yet? Oh, I don't know why he went British. Roger that. It's a beautiful day at Mission Control. You gonna swing by? Be there in a minute. Here we go. Oh my god. I think it's an ending. Yeah. Over time. Okay, well, whatever. But we didn't turn Grand back to Mom. 
And we didn't turn Rolo back to a child. But I think we only have one path left. Mom, where do you go now? You go on without me. I'll meet you there. I've got a voucher of jam to finish jarring. It's funny. I only started making jam as a way to send messages without anyone noticing. But now, I enjoy it. Aw. I love you, Mom, Gran. Grandma. Grandmom. Oh, maybe that's, maybe that's why they say that. We also never dealt with the fact that the entire town moved over. Like, there's a whole fake town. Oh, I hear you and Rolo have big plans for that little treehouse. Yeah, it started getting crowded after we revoked the max capacity one Rolo, one Luca rule. So we decided to expand, but at least we got some help with that. How's the internship at Nelly and Ilona's shop going? It's been great. I'm hoping it helps me get into the School of Agriculture up at State. Also, Nelly said she'd write a letter recommendation, which would be huge. I just can't help but worry about leaving Rolo. He's grown up so fast, but he's still my little brother. Yeah, he had a heck of a growth spurt. I don't just mean ground literally. This morning he was up and finished his chores before I even had breakfast. Well, some of that might be his excitement about the treehouse renovations. Don't tell him this because it'll go to his head, but I'm really proud of that little punk. I'm sure he feels the same way, but he's just too dang proud to tell you. Oh, I know. Interesting. I want the shovel. Okay, I can't have the shovel. It's as big as I am. Oh, shit. What is happening here? A little hoy- uh, fuck, uh, park your car. <laughs> what is it? I'm walking here, a little higher. Yup. Little lower. Yup. A little higher. Yup. I'm telling ya, the angle isn't the issue. We need more power to the radio. Luca, there you are. Would you tell him it's not the angle? Hey, I'm not in charge of antenna redesign. Fine, fine. Iggy, just don't do anything drastic until we get back. I, Gigi, why? Who, me? Tish, you're in charge while I'm gone. Yep. Love it. It'll be fine, right? It'll be fine. If we really want Mission Control to turn into something bigger and better, we have to loosen our grip a bit. <sighs> You're right. Lead the way. Alright. Hi, GGY. Let's go. Let's go. Slow and dirty harvest. <laughs> like that. That's great. Slow and dirty is uh slow and dirty slow and uh that's what when when I when like the when uh when I talked went to for what you women uh slow and uh, in high school they call that's what they called me actually. So, you know. Hey, back! <laughs> Moving on! <laughs> oh, I have news I think you'll enjoy. This morning I unpacked my last box. You're officially moved in! It's just a box. Let's not blow this out of proportion. It sounds an awful lot like putting down roots. I guess I decided this place is root worthy. You're gonna be stuck with me for the foreseeable future. I do have to warn you, most years aren't going to be as interesting as this one. I think I'll manage. Ready? Before we go, there's a bit of a surprise. I wonder how many good endings there are. Oh, shit. My mom's prepared this tree especially for you. You didn't have to do that. It wasn't just them. Just about the whole town pitched in. We all owe you. It should do okay in the old, in the cold of old Beacon Points and thrive as things warm up. That's perfect. Take Jeff's wild ride to old Beacon Pines. Jeff's what? Is that what he called it? Jesus. Why does Beck sound Australian? Um, that's the we decided we decree I decreed that Beck's accent is just from Beckland. So whatever it sounds like, that's what she's supposed to sound like. Hi, Jeff. Ah, 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 there you are. Ah, wait, fuck, that's not even what we said. Ah, you got it. Now that's a good looking tree. Being a special occasion and whatnot, this this rides on the house. You're gonna wanna hang on tight to that little tree. Alright, here we go. I like how they just turned it into an attraction. That's great. Of course he monopolized it. <laughs> I think this is it. 
the end I've been waiting for. Are you sure about that? Honestly, I began to lose hope of ever finding it. This is the end? We looked at uh, Non-Creed with Malice. I thought that would be a bad choice. But then you came along. <laughs> what? <laughs> I did what? <laughs> I, I no, 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 exactly not on stream. Thank you. No, no, no. It's hard to explain how much this means to me. It's funny now that our time together is finally ending. I'm at a loss for words. <laughs> Let's just watch the end together. I did what now? Done. A good little tree. The best little tree. Okay, this was good. This is a good ending, I think, though. Thank you, children. This means a lot. Can we just point out that, like, I just lost... Like, Luca just lost, like, years and years and years of time with his mom because she's now a grandma. Like, she's as old enough to be a grandma. I'm just saying. Also, Rolo is gonna be, like, a 20-year-old going to high school or, like, middle school, so, you know. It's not, like, great, is all I'm saying. Like, Rolo, Rolo at least only lost, like, maybe a couple years. Like, he's not that old. You know, he was 12 before, maybe he's, like, 18 now. That's not that bad. But she lost, like, if her kid was 6, she could have been, like, in her 20s. And now she looks like she's in her 60s. Or more. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that's much worse. She could be in her 80s right now. Shucks, I only did what any super awesome best buddy would have done. We should probably give you some time alone now. You good? Yeah, I am. It's been a wild year. How are you feeling? Everyone keeps asking me that. I'm fine, really. I always says the only thing fitter than a fiddle is a cello. I feel like a dang cello. Well, if you ever stop feeling like a cello, I'm here for you. I know, you don't even have to say it. You two make an awesome pair. Excuse me? We're a trio now. Yep. Hi. Thanks. There's just one thing missing. Now that you're a part of our group. Missing? Let me tell you a little story about a man named Hank Atomic. Oh god. I won't be long. We'll be waiting for you back at the phone booth. I found the perfect way to start our summer. You've got some good friends. I'm so proud of you. Your father would be so proud. I know. Mom, can I ask you a question? Do you ever dream about that? Not a night goes by that I don't. Are you ever afraid that you're gonna forget him? Forget what he looked like? Forget his voice? No, because so much of him lives on in you. He loved that old tree, but I know he would have loved this one more. Because his two favorite people planted it. I'll give you two a moment. Aww. Hey, Dad. Dr. Modwell says that over the next few years, this place should warm up. So you won't have to be so cold for so much longer. I think I finally understand why you left that night. There were things you believed in. Big things. Those beliefs were the things that made you, you. If you wouldn't have stood up to, harp, to Sharper, stood up for what you believed in, you wouldn't have been the same person anymore. You had to go, but that didn't mean you loved us any less. I might not visit you as much as I used to. I know you understand. Achievement! Let's go. Close the book. Close to the book. Hey, you know what? It's a pretty apt name for an achievement. I can't believe we got the right one, to be honest. I really- I want to know what happens in that last path. So we got two achievements left, and I know what they are. I checked online, um, because they're both things that we- So one of them, we can do, um, we didn't technically miss, and the other one we did miss, but it'll take us two seconds to go back and get it. But, um, we can sit here and relax and enjoy the credits for now. <laughs> What's happening? They're all heading out? Where are they going?
I missed a lot of the game, but what I did see, I enjoyed. Randomized alert, I don't think it does anything right now. I don't even remember adding that, but apparently I added it. I don't even remember adding that. I gotta go through my- my- <laughs> I can't refund you! Why would you click it? You've clicked it before and you knew it didn't work. Why would you click it now? I can't refund you, it automatically clears it. <laughs> I'll go through my alerts eventually. I've had a lot of, like, work to do outside of stream. I'm streaming every day, so I don't have time to, like... Because there are days where I'd be like, should I stream tonight? And then I'd be like, you know what, I'll just work on stuff. But I haven't been able to look at the commands because I'm streaming every day. Whoopsies! There's a lot of names here. Alright, everyone's he heading out. I can be loud again. W's in the chat. We're only at D alphabet. Yeah, dude, this is gonna take a while. <laughs> this is gonna take a very long time. Are these all the testers? There's no way these are all devs, right? There's someone just named Katie. Just Katie. Didn't want a last name. Kip, KT, Lily. Yo, Lily, you were in this game? Let's go. Hell yeah. Meep. Yo, look at Meep. It was my idea? Yeah, hell yeah. Damn, well, I, I, I was trying to say damn and I went with a B instead, and then I didn't know where to go with, with that. I was trying to say damn and I went BAM. BAM, guys. Anyway, this is there's someone named Place. Um, just Place. Rick. Riggs. Um, Sage? Let's go. NPC, NPC was part of it. Let's go, dude. Sting, Spacey. Not Spacey, no. Uh, table was in it. Ten. Taylor Swift. I'm kidding. She's not on here. Sorry, guys. Sorry to break it to you. Table, your table. Sick. You're in. You're in. <laughs> Hell yeah. We did it. All right, let's go and put, finish off that last thing and get these last two achievements. Just cause we don't have to, but. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that's what they meant when they said eleven chapters. It's not actually eleven chapters. It's eleven turning points. All right, so I'm seeing check mark, check mark, check mark, check mark. I think the entire left side's done, yes. Uh this one, this one, this one, that's done. Shame. So shame is the last thing to do. And we know that we have all the turning points most likely now. There was a shame lurking behind those there eyes. There was a shame lurking behind those eyes. I wonder if this will actually do a anything. Deep sadness. If Mr. Nuncreed was that worried about Rolo, maybe he could help. Oh, so that's why this was the wrong thing to do. Yesterday, Rolo and I were messing around at the old Valentine warehouse. Mr. Nuncreed raised an eyebrow. Both of you? You were with Rolo when he went missing? No, not exactly, I was hiding in the dumpster. The dumpster? What were you doing in there? At first, we were just looking around. Then someone in a strange yellow suit came and dumped something on us. We both got scared and ran. That was the last I saw of him. You got scared by garbage? Well, that's why you don't go skulking in someone's dumpster. But it wasn't garbage. I think... I think it was a body. I'm sure it was just some trash. No, there was a name tag. It said Deep Engineering. Mr. Nancreed's shoulders slumped. I wish you wouldn't have said that. A deep sigh bellowed from his chest. Why did you have to... I tried, Luca. God knows I tried to keep you safe. Luca attempted to take a step back, but Nuncreed's hand clamped down on his shoulder. But you, Van Orns, just can't help yourselves, can you? We were all so close! 
so close to being done with this. With a firm shove, Nuncreed manhandled Luca into the phone booth. What are you doing? It's out of my hands now. The door latched shut with a mechanical hiss. Shit. As Luca pounded the glass, the floor dropped from under his feet. The inside of the phone booth was now a loose capsule plummeting at gravity's whim. Luca winced and pressed his hands to the walls. As he braced for impact, the capsule hurried to a surprisingly smooth stop. He felt a cold rush of air and opened his eyes with hesitance. Two large figures in hazmat suits occluded his view. Luca heard the deep, resigned voice of Mr. Nuncreed over an intercom. He knows too much. The end. Damn! Wait. No. This isn't the end. I know there's still... Somehow this went... Okay, let's... Okay, okay, okay. Sick, we did it. Okay, I thought that would be, would be way longer, but we did it. All right, um... Let's go with... Go with... Where do we go? Uh, I think... Okay, we need to go to... I believe it's... Is it flight? I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. Oh, struggle. We have to go to, we have to do struggle here. This is a story about struggle. And we're just going to skip through the dialogue. We're just going to get these last achievements he real quick. His hand, he yanked it. Ledge. Luca swore. He heard the, with a muffled. Luca was, he never. Chapter everything. The next, only the sound. There we go. All right. I will deliver your gem. I got you, buddy. Okay. So the first achievement is to break that watermelon. If you guys remember that. Okay. This has been a good, fun game, dude. I'm glad we did that. I'm glad we got through it. Alright, and he's gonna be mad. This is the timeline where he gets real pissed at us for hanging out with Beck. Okay, there you go. Stop talking to me, guys! I'm trying to get an achievement! Um, but yeah, guys, I if you uh, are not a fan of achievements like VOD or whatever and you want to head out, that's all good. I think we're gonna play Celeste 64 next because I have more than enough time and now everyone's out of the house. Um, which makes me way more comfortable streaming because I'm a loud motherfucker. So, um... Hydrate, thank you, girl. So we have to just start bashing this guy. Achievement! Found a way to kick the melon. Okay, so I, I guess before we punched it, so this time we kicked it. Okay, so that achievement. I thought we had to break it, to be honest, but we don't. Um, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, so I think we have time to play Celeste 64. Um, like I said in pr past VODs and streams, um, technically it's not a sad game, but it's based on, like, it's made because of Celeste. Um, wait, I wanna, okay, I gotta sit in the chair. Uh, so now we gotta catch all the fish. That's the last achievement. So we've gotten a lot of charms in the last, I think there should be eight. Am I wrong? Let me just check and make sure we have all of them. Otherwise, we might have to go get one. Because I had a feeling there was eight, but I don't remember. But yeah, um, if you're watching on the VOD, the the VOD for the... Um, yeah, it says eight. The VOD for the uh, thingy, for the next thing, for Celeste, will be tonight. It'll be at probably 8 p.m. EST. So six hours after this VOD. So if you want to watch that, uh, when you get... <laughs> Okay, all right. We need to go and get um, stuck. Those things always get. This last charm is something we can get right now. We have to go to the treehouse. To the treehouse, and then we go over here. Go outside. Go go to the antenna. Luca looked up at the satellite dish. Rollo nearly killed himself putting that up into the tree. And there we go. While All right. it didn't turn the radio into an interstellar communicator, as he'd hoped, it did at least boost the signal enough to overhear truckers one town over. We didn't miss, like, much, though. I think we got, like, basically every charm. That was one of the few that we didn't... Probably. I'm assuming. 
We only needed eight for- oops. We only need eight for this fishing thing, so it's possible that's the only one we missed. Because I don't know what else we could have done in this game. Anyway. Luca's Smack. Stuck at those things always now we gotta fucking fish again. You guys know how I feel about fishing minigames. Unnecessary ones. There we go. Should we give it to mom? She likes Julie. That's a sweet thought, Buckaroo. But I'm not sure she'd fully appreciate a pawn bracelet. I want to know what the fuck was up with that freak that was in the in old Luca Beacon Pines. Some tape around the hook. Hey, you never. You guys remember that? The damn, the damn ghost motherfucker. I don't remember his name or like their name. I don't actually know what the gender was, but I don't remember their name. But it was like the, the creepy guy that we saw when me and Iggy Iggy went to the town. We never got any closure on that guy. It's got a bunch of big words written on it. Let's see that. We regret to inform you that your application for property rights with respect to the Beacon Pine CBD and surrounding area has been rejected. Who's that for? Applicant Valentine Estate. Good. Good. <laughs> Luca Struggle. placed a sinker on sometimes the best stuff. Okay. Was the dude not? I don't remember. I don't remember what the dude was. Anyway, I'm glad we've got through this game. And we're going to 100% it right now. After we get all these fish. Quote unquote fish. Malice 80 proof whiskey. A hard liquor for a hard man. Best leave that be. Takes a real piece of work to leave something like that lying around. This is all Valentine's stuff, isn't it? Luca wrapped a twig. Some fish have ref. <laughs> a hard man? Yeah, I know, right? This game is crazy. This game's so sexual for no reason. There we go. Property of Sharper Valentine. Figures. If he had his way, property of Sharper Valentine would be written on everything in this town. Should we give it back to him? He may not even want it back. The man's got a contentious relationship with time. We'll keep it here in case he ever wants to pick it up. Alright. Luca tied a bit. If all you Guys, don't you just love fishing? There we go. It's a photo of you and Uncle Joseph. Let me see that. Ha, look at these two young fools. How did it end up at the bottom of the pond? Who can say? Some things are just hard to explain. I miss Uncle Joseph. How come he doesn't come fishing with us anymore? He's busy with his new job at Valentine's. What's a new job got to do with him fishing with us? It's complicated. Like I said, some things are hard to explain. So that's Nun Creed, right? Luca tied a small fishing with a log. See, this is another thing where it's like, it's, I like the story where it's a young kid because there's so much that you just forget. I, I might have fucked this up. Because I didn't see the little... I didn't see it actually plop, but I don't know. We might be fine. I got a little excited. Key! Where do you think the lock is for this key? Now why would we want to find that? Because then we could, would know the secret. Yeah, that's no fun. The second we know what it unlocks, it just becomes a boring old key. Right now, this key could unlock anything. Cool. Wow, that's quite a haul. Feels like a good time to pack up. Aw, oh, just a little bit longer. If things lasted forever, they might not feel special, huh? I guess. I'll make you a deal, Buckaroo. If you ever feel like you need to talk about anything at all, you just say, let's go fishing, and I'll know what you mean. Like a secret password? Yep, top secret. Neat! Alright! Here we go. Look at that. 100 percented We love to see it. Alright, perfect. Um, YouTube, I guess that's, uh, that's it. That's it, we did it! Beacon Pines, 100 percented I'll be back tomorrow, obviously. Uh, also tonight, because I, I think I'm gonna- It's gonna take me a while to- Oh, I'm realizing I'm going to have to restart my laptop and it has all my school stuff open. Ugh! I'll have to bookmark everything. That's fine. Um, 
but yeah, tonight we'll have something. Tomorrow we'll have something. Um, I don't know exactly what I'm playing tomorrow. It's possible I do something with Ellie if we can figure that out. If we can't figure it out, I have a game already downloaded waiting for me. So um, we'll see what happens. It depends. Depends on some factors. But whatever we do, it'll be a fun little weepier game. But yeah, bye YouTube. Take care. See you in the next VOD. Adios.